The comrade leader then looked at the strategies of the clique. What did the clique do? First of all, it took final control of the Jamaica Labour Party. And the Jamaica Labour Party is now the instrument and the yo-yo of the clique. And the Labour Party of today is not the Labour Party of 30 years ago. It is now the yo-yo of the clique. The second strategy was propaganda. And they let loose upon Jamaica the most vicious propaganda this country has ever seen. You are bombarded day and night with every lie and falsehood. And they watched to see if you would lose faith. And when you showed them in the by-elections of last year that you were now socialist conscious and aware and beginning the march on the road to building a socialist society, they realized the propaganda had failed. So then we had the third stage of the strategy, which was gunmanship and violence. And the guns barked, and the fires raged, and they hoped that in the bark of the guns and the raging of the fire that you would lose faith and turn back. And you were meant to feel that we could not manage it, and that better you retreat. And then we put the guns and the fire under heavy management. And when they realized that had failed, they now came to the fourth and final assault against us, and that is the squeeze on the economy, the squeeze on the economy. And right now, you understand me plainly. When you talk of economic sabotage, they will say to you, how do you prove it? But I will tell you what the answer is. A man who is asked to expand his business and willfully says, Unless you bow to me, I will not expand it. Unless you turn back the progress, I will not expand my business. That man is also guilty of sabotage by willful non-cooperation. And there is plenty of that in Jamaica today. Understand, comrades? If the price of their expanding the business is to turn back the progress and to betray the people and betray the masses, that is a price we will never pay. We will never pay that price. We will never pay that price. We will never pay that price. But let them understand, we ask for the cooperation but understand, if they will not cooperate, the socialist movement will find other ways to run the industries. have lived through. 
in 1973 we begun to feel the lash of world inflation the prices for the wheat that you take to make the flour and use the flour to make the bread and the dumpling all of a sudden the price go up five times we couldn't do nothing about it except prepare to change the world in time the oil prices one lick raised four times this little country pay now 160 million dollars a year now more to buy the same oil and without the oil you don't turn on a light you don't run a truck you don't start a tractor you don't move one thing in Jamaica them lick us 160 million dollars one time all we could do is take it they talk about efficiency they talk about who can manage the economy if they had been in power when those things hit us nothing could have saved us the only thing that saved Jamaica at that time was one thing that this government did and that we alone could do because we alone were willing to fight imperialism we alone were willing to fight the multinational corporation we alone were willing to mobilize the bauxite producers of the world we alone were willing to fight as leaders of the third world and the thing that saved Jamaica was the bauxite levy the bauxite levy which was the use of the sovereign power of a third world nation to put multinational corporations under heavy manners and that saved us for a couple of years but then the next blow that came was the blow of the world recession because of the crisis in international capitalism the bauxite market was way down the sugar price was way down we took a blow this year alone of the loss of 60 million dollars of revenue not for our fault but because of yet another crisis in international capitalism and we were the victims the sugar price collapsed as usual left us losing 25 million dollars of revenue you talk about management if we had not the bauxite levies to protect us even when the production was down Jamaica would have been bankrupt two years ago and when those things hit us comrades you tell me what you would have us do I remember when I went around Jamaica to you in your tens of thousands in every parish of Jamaica and I explained the economic crisis to you I told you the blow that this little country that had suffered so much before was being asked to endure again and I remember we put the choice to you and you and I we talked about it together and I said the choice was simple we can either look at thousands of children and put them back out 
We can take all the schools that are building and stop building them. We can take every feed of road that is being cut for a farmer and tell the farmer, cut. We said we can take the nutrition programs that are bringing food to thousands of mothers for the first time at last. And then we can stop it, we can cancel it, because world conditions had us in hard times. But I was proud of you, my comrades. In every meeting that I went to, in Port Antonio, Port Maria, Mandeville, Montego Bay, Tablama, Maypen, Santa Cruz, Black River, Spanish Town, all over Jamaica, you came back to your movement with one voice, and you said, no turning back. No turning back. And you charged us to go another way, which was to say, keep the children in their schools. Keep the baby milk moving to the mothers. Keep the houses building and ask those that can pay more taxes to pay more. You said, let the nation sacrifice so that the majority may be saved. And I say, God bless you. Trust the masses every time. Trust the masses every time. And so we put on the taxes, not rudely, not in bad temper, we put them on with apology, with courtesy, with explanation. And every Jamaican that cares for this land more than for himself said, you are right, and said, right on. But the clique, oh no, Oh no, there was a weeping and a wailing and a gnashing of teeth. Some of them are holler, some are ball. And the creek suddenly became like a collection of chichi bud. Because we went to them. We went to the private sector. And we said, in the face of this fantastic pressure, help us now out of love of country. And we said, produce now as you have never produced before. We said, produce now as you have never produced before. Because our nation is in a crisis that is not of Jamaica's making. And I said for some, they have produced as never before. And I say hail to those producers that have produced as never before. <laughs> but there was another part, the clique, that even though we gave practical, realistic incentives, a whole package of incentives, to show that it was more than rhetoric, that it was a real and concrete appeal to produce. They said no. They said the only way we will produce is if you stop talking of socialism. They said the only way we will produce is if you stop having a foreign policy. They said the only way we will produce is if you break your friendship with Cuba. They said the only way we will produce is if you stop meddling in Southern Africa. They said the only way we will produce is if you turn it all back. And when you deliver the people to us,
again as we had them before, then we will produce. We go around Jamaica and they say to the people, if you abandon socialism, if you forget equality, if you forget justice, if you forget the struggle of the poor of the world, if you turn your eyes inward while our black brothers are killed and murdered in Soweto, if you make us feel that we the clique are in charge again, we will produce, we will open the money bags, and I say to them, the masses of Jamaica are not for sale. The masses of Jamaica are not for sale. In the final section of his speech, the comrade leader continued on the theme, the people of Jamaica are not for sale. Because comrades, we have lived with the clique before. We lived in the world of the crumbs from the rich man's table. And I say Jamaica is at the point of decision now. We watch how certain sources abroad try to smash up our tourist trade by writing vicious articles about us and we wonder whose hand is manipulating the strings now here is nobody's hand they tell me nobody does it they tell me the whole thing happened by accident I don't believe it because when I look inside Jamaica, there are people with a motive to turn us back. And some of the articles about Jamaica are procured from inside Jamaica. And when I look outside, there are those with a motive to put us in our place and teach us our manners. And tell us who are we to believe that we can tell a bauxite company what taxation to pay? Who are we? Who are we to stand behind Cuba when she goes to the liberation of Angola by the defeat of the fascist and apartheid troops of South Africa? And they say, who are we? Poor little Jamaica, who are we? to mix up in all that. Well, I will tell you who we are. We are Jamaicans. And we little. <laughs> and having told you who we are, I will tell you why. Because we know that for 300 years we have lived 
messing with that system and all we got was slavery and when we didn't get slavery we got bad sugar prices and when we weren't getting bad sugar prices we were getting hovels to raise our children we know what that system has meant for us we know what the masses got when the bauxite buildings were being built in Jamaica they got nothing and we are not for sale we are not for sale and tell them any time they are willing to deal with an honorable Jamaica based on principles, sovereignty, pride and dignity then we will talk the investment of the money but if we are to return to our knees they can keep the money, we will find another way and my friends you're in for a tough time but this year for the first time the Jamaican people have learned the difference between suffering and struggle every worker knows the workers that used to walk the picket line with me that took the tear gas together that were arrested together that lay down and block the streets of Kingston together when the conditions are bad you suffer and if sometimes you have to go and strike you suffer even more but you suffer for a cause and when you suffer for a cause that is not suffering it is struggle I want you to say that word with me struggle struggle Struggle. Every worker that has ever had to go hungry on a picket line knows what it is to struggle. And when he has won his strike, then the suffering is over and he enters a new pasture of joy and principle. And they are making us suffer now. But what they did not realize is that the masses would show the capacity to struggle. I tell you, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. God bless you. God bless you. No power can turn you back once you learn to struggle. because we know where we are going we will remember the daycare centers that we are building because we know where we are going the national youth service that we have started because we know where we are going the pioneer corps that is launching because we know where we are going Jamal and literacy and into the light for the masses because we know where we are going And we are going that place they believe they believe they believe bless their craven little hearts they believe that we are going without the middle class but they are wrong look about you 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 my comrades there is now equal pay for equal work because we know where we are going we have a minimum wage law now because 
We know where we are going. We have compulsory recognition of trade unions now because we know where we are going. We have real protection for workers now because we have a family court for mothers now because there is status for children now because we are having worker participation in the industry now because and community councils now because and rent tribunals now because and community health aids now because and national housing trust now because and sites and services housing now because and roll back of rent now because to the workers housing now because the school feeding program now because nutrition for pregnant women now because old age pensions by the 30,000 now because rural electrification now because feed the road for farmers now because better farm prices now because micro dam built by our Cuban friends now because project land lease now because Sugar workers cooperatives now because bauxite lands return to Jamaica now because the bauxite levy now because the International Bauxite Association now because majority ownership in bauxite companies now because the joint ventures with Mexico now because the national shipping line now for the first time at last because a third world foreign policy now that trade union of the poor because we know where we are going. We are creating a new man. We have begun the building of socialist man. We are working towards the day when there will be no more masters and no more servants but only one together in the Lord. And we are learning now to go not upon our knees, but as true, sovereign, human, dignified human beings, because we know where we are going. Be disciplined, be worthy. In the name of every child in every hovel, anywhere in Jamaica or in the world, in the name of every black man working out his days in the indignity of his servitude in Southern Africa. In the name of every mother whose heart is an agony as she gazes upon her baby and asks, what is there for you, my little one? In the name of every Jamaican who cares for justice. In the name of every youth who has died. In the name of Sam Shah. In the name of Paul Bogle. In the name of George William Gordon, in the name of Marcus Garvey, in the name of Norman Manley, in the name of every victim that ever lived, in the name of every martyr that ever died, we will not fail, we shall overcome.
Why? 